The point of this is to practice. So practice is the key to competence, practice writing more code. Basically, if you just want to practice, just pull up your Visual Studio and you can put it, you know, if you're doing Windows, you could put it to the right. If you're doing Mac, sorry. <laughs> you probably wouldn't be able to do this on Mac anyways. This is only on Windows PC. Anyways, all right, at the end of the lesson, you're, we're going to start doing our own code. That's going to be the next lesson, just not editing something that's already there. But first, a little more info. So what good programmers do instead of remembering? An experienced programmer will make notes, and you should probably take notes during this anyways. Make notes in the code um, that are not actually part of the program, but comments about what they did or why they did it. When the program runs, these comments are ignored, but the programmer's notes called code comments or just comments stay in the code. So code comments, let's look at the different kinds of comments that they have. It's a good practice in general, but especially useful when you're just starting to program, figuring things out. Um, these comments can really be helpful when you're trying to understand why you or someone else did something. The simplest way to write a comment is put a pound or hashtag sign in front of the comment, but there are other ways to do it as well. So down below they're showing us all the ways to do the comments. You first put a hashtag. Anything that comes after the pound sign is not going to be... Um, code is going to be a comment and again a comment is not going to run as code a comment is just so you know what's you, what's going on inside of the code and it's good practice to put them all over the place in your code another one is called an inline comment so anything that appears in like um, you'd have to have this symbol then a pound and then anything in there uh, is part of the comment so you can see a comment and maybe format it like this as well but it's still a comment it's just a comment that's happening inside of this line another kind of comment is a multi line block comment so that means it's a comment that runs over multi multi lines like this one one two three lines but it's still part of the same comment and they still have it blocked off by these same symbols here um, and then another block comments uh, these are nested block comments okay so you can put a comment inside of a comment and pretty much that's what a nested block comment is. It's part of the code and it can nest. This is useful if you want to comment out some expressions in a line or testing or debugging. Lastly, the, the kind of comment, the last kind of comment is if you just put this symbol here, it's called an indented comment. Anything that appears on the new lines after this symbol and is indented four spaces over is part of the code comment. So the first line isn't indented, four spaces over, it's not part of the code comment, and it ends the code comment. So whatever line is not indented, it ends the code comment, and then they have to start another one. See? All right, cool. So now you have to use comments. These are really important when you're programming, like they said, just so you can know what you're doing. Um, like in our old code before that we were working on in the other episode, there was comments in there, if you noticed, um, just tells you what what you're supposed to do or what's happening with this code now let's learn about something else this is going to be really important I'm gonna well we could just look at it here so using conditions to make decisions in code the if else expression is super important so uh, we saw that back in lesson two I think but they're called conditionals and the if expression is testing whether or something succeeded or failed right certain code might be able to run if it succeeds if it fails other code would run instead so that would be the else if it's if succeeds else run the fail you can think of this as a quick way to ask your program yes or no question in real life you make decisions all the time based on the answer to a yes or no question for example are you tired if the answer is yes you go to sleep if the answer is no else you stay up and watch cartoons. And if you wanted to write that in code, it might look like this. So now, this is a good practice. If you have your editor pulled up, you can delete this after you write this, but it's just good practice. Copy this, copy these lines of code in because the more that you type code, the faster that you're gonna get at it, right? So we can type all this code in, just how we see it here, but like I said, the point of this is practice. 
because you're gonna make errors. You're gonna like, oops, I didn't, I didn't indent, I didn't press uh, space or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But it's good to practice. Uh, so let's look at what they're saying, anyways. So after you've typed it in, let's read it. It's saying that we made a variable out of tired. So tired is our variable name. What kind? What type of variable is it? It's a logic variable, and it's equal to false initially. And remember, it's a variable, so it can change during the game. Uh, we also made another variable called what to watch, and that variable is a string, and it equals nothing. So the the if or the conditional statement that we set up was if else. So if, then you have to put it in parentheses. Tired question mark in parentheses colon then you want to set what to watch to your eyelids what to watch can change and if it if tired is true that's why the question mark is there if tired is true then you know it's going to set what to watch to your eyelids else if tired is not true that's what else means set what to watch to cartoons so this would be set to cartoons if tired is false. Then print you should watch and then what to watch. And when you print this, it's going to say you should watch for now since tired is false, it's going to say cartoons. And I hopefully y'all followed that because that's how coding works. But we're learning different kinds of code right now. We're learning conditional statements. So this is this is how you use it and this is how you write it. Did you notice the question mark at the end of the if expression? Let's look at that right here. Tired question mark. Okay. That's how a verse program checks to see if logic type is true or false. So basically it's saying, is tired true? That's literally the question it's asking. So you have to put a question mark there if it's a logic type variable and you're wanting to know if it's true or false. All right. When code is nested, this means that it's indented under a keyword expression like if or else. So if you noticed, the set right here is indented. That means it's nested, right? Uh, these expressions create new scope. A scope refers to a chunk of code where names are and their associated values can be used. The scope is contained within a block of code that is indented, right? <coughs> So the set what to watch right here, your eyelids line is indented under the if tired. The same pattern repeats for else. So this is underneath else, right? You can nest a single line of code or you can nest a block, multiple lines of code. So I could put more logic under here if I wanted to. What this means is that when you run the code, the nested code will only execute within the context of the code it's nested under. So that means what when when you try to set what to watch to your eyelids, it will only run under this part of that code. So if tired is true and this will only run if tired is not true, meaning else. All right. Sometimes you can use multiple conditions and this is where you're going to, you know, this will help you to write some really cool code right here. Sometimes you need to ask more than one question before you can make a decision. In verse, this is done with operators and or. So we're going to be using and or. These are referred to as decision operators. When using and, the conditions on both sides of the operator need to be true or succeed for the whole expression to succeed. When using or, only one condition needs to be true to succeed for the whole expression to succeed. So let's look at that. They got a chart down here for us. Um, I'm going to make mine a little bit bigger because I'm not using the code right now, but we, we'll, we'll come to that later. Maybe. So, if the first condition succeeds, so if tired is true and something else is true, then the whole thing ex will be true. So that's what this chart is pretty much saying. So if tired is true and something else fails, well then that whole expression will fail right because you used an and if you wanted that to succeed you'd have to use an or so if tired fails right and 
the next condition fails, then the whole expression is going to fail. Now, when you use or, it's different. Everything succeeds except fails and fails. So hopefully that made sense to you because basically it's showing you how to use the and or operator. So sometimes you're going to use if else, but sometimes you have more than one question that you need to ask. So you'll use and or or. All right, so to see how they work, let's revise the code that we were just working on. So go ahead and, all right, if you are not tired, it might be a good idea to sleep if you have school tomorrow. So let's check that by creating a variable called school tomorrow and using or to check both logic variables. So, all right, cool. So now that you've got that written all out, good job. The whole point of this is practice writing code, obviously. But let's talk about what's happening. Tired is still set to false, but since school tomorrow is set to true, the whole expression succeeds, meaning, yeah, it's, it's right. And what to watch gets set to your eyelids. So since tired is false and school tomorrow is true, we're using an or since tired is false or school tomorrow is true, then it gets set to your eyelids. Um, so remember the or and and is pretty much what we're learning and there's one more that we have to learn here so we learned if and else then we learned or and and but now let's learn this next one called if else if else so using this puts a sequence together of things that you're checking this means that you can check the first condition you only need to check the next condition if the previous condition failed. So if this is true, cool, then do something. But if not, do some, check this. And if this is true, then do something. If not, then do this. So basically, here's an example. What if there's no school tomorrow and you're not tired? You might want to go see a movie with your friends. So let's revise the code one more time to see how this works. And again, if you're at home, the point of this is just writing code. So just write this in here in your program. Delete it when we're finished with this because we don't want it to be saved to anything. We could delete it. And then um, it's just for practice. It gets you faster. So update the value of school tomorrow variable and declare a new variable called a variable called friends available. So variable friends available. It's a logic and it's either true or false. We're going to set it to true set school tomorrow to false. So next, you would update the code to check if your friends are available, but only if you aren't tired or you don't have school tomorrow. So check this. If you're, if tired is true or school tomorrow is true, set, what, what, set to what to watch to your eyelids. But we know that school tomorrow is set to false and tired is set to false. So it's going to say check if friends available is true. And we did set friends available to true. So in that case, we need to set what to watch to a movie with your friends. Else, if friends available was not true, then we would set what to watch to cartoons. So that's how you use the if, else if, else statement. It's doing a series of checks. So now you'll only sleep if you're tired or if school is uh, or if it's a school night. If the answer to either question is still no, you'll either watch a movie with your friends or stay at home and watch cartoons. If your friends aren't available, um, if that's what you'll do is you'll watch cartoons. So that's what we just saw. And we just went over the reasons why all of this makes sense. So if it doesn't make sense, you can come to this website. I'll put this here, but you can just like look at it. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. You just gotta stare at it for a while and be like, hmm, what am I missing? And then you'll get it. But uh, let's look at the bottom part here. There's like, here's something. So a bug is an error in your computer program that causes uh, it to produce an incorrect or unexpected result. That's what a bug is. I'm sure y'all know what bugs are if you play games. The effect of a bug can be something little or like or it could be little like changing the color of the text message or more dramatic like sending the text message to a screen to 
at the wrong time or even causing the program to crash. So um, there's going to be two different kinds of bugs. There's like a compiler error. That means there's a bug in your code, right? And the code is talking about is this code that you've been writing in Visual Studio. Once you try to compile it down, uh, there may be a compiler error, right? But in the other case, there's going to be a bug, and that will be actually in the code. So it may compile correctly, but it may produce an unexpected result in your code, and that's going to be a bug. So like say, we mix this down, it's like cool, then we put it on the Fortnite editor, and then instead of doing what we asked it to do, it makes our character just like start flying in the sky. Well, that's that's a bug and not a compiler error because the it compiled correctly it just did an unexpected result so that's a bug so that is the end <laughs> that's the end of uh what we're going to talk about today in this one and i'm gonna have a couple more coming out today i'm sorry i made y'all wait because i had to get off work real quick but um that is what this is so go ahead and practice writing your code and make sure you're quick with it make sure you can do it fast and it feels good to you and also review this, review the comments, review the if else statement, review the or and and conditional statements or operators, and also review the if else, if else statement. And on that note, I'll holla at y'all next time. Peace.